Elegy, which was performed for the first time in 1952 at the Queen's College, Oxford, under Bernard Rose, and was included in a special concert given later that year in Dorking to celebrate the composer's 80th birthday. The text is adapted from two famous poems by Matthew Arnold. The first is The Scholar Gypsy, which tells of a young Oxford scholar who, tired of knocking at preferment's door, left his friends and joined the gypsies, and from time to time was seen haunting the countryside, waiting for the spark from heaven to fall. The other poem, Thyrsus, was written in memory of the poet Arthur Hugh Clough, who was at Oxford with Arnold and who died in Florence in 1861 at the age of 42. In this, there are references to an elm tree on the crown of a hill and to a legend that, so long as the tree stands, the scholar gypsy lives on and travels yet the loved hillside. Most of the words are spoken, but some are sung by the chorus, who also, from time to time, are heard singing without words. An Oxford Elegy by Vaughan Williams. and untie the wattle coat. No longer leave thy wistful flock unfed, nor let thy bawling fellows rack their throats, nor the cropped grasses shoot another head. But when the fields are still, and the tired men and dogs all gone to rest, and only the white sheep are sometimes seen to cross and recross the strips of moon-blanched green. Come, shepherd, and again begin the quest. Here will I sit and wait, while to my ear, from uplands far away, the bleating of the folded flocks is borne, with distant cries of reapers in the corn. All the 
live murmur of a summer day. Screened is this nook o'er the high half reaped field, and here till sundown, shepherd, will I be. Through the thick corn, the scarlet poppies peep, and round green roots and yellowing stalks, I see pale pink convolvulus in tendrils creep, and air swept lindens yield their scent and rustle down their perfume showers of bloom on the bent grass where I am laid, and bower me from the August sun with shade. And the eye travels down to Oxford's tower. Let me read the oft-read tale again, the story of that Oxford scholar poor who one summer morn forsook his friends and came, as most men deem, to little good, but came to Oxford and his friends no more. But rumors hung about the countryside that the lost scholar long was seen to stray, seen by rare glimpses, pensive and tongue-tied. And I myself seemed half 
to know thy looks and put the shepherd's wanderer on thy trail. Or in my boat I lie, moored to the cool bank in the summer heat, mid wide grass meadows which the sunshine fills, and watch the warm green muffled Cumnor hills, and wonder if thou haunts their shy retreats, leaning backwards in a pensive dream, and fostering in thy lap a heap of flowers plucked in shy fields and distant witchwood bowers, and thine eyes resting on the moonlit stream, still waiting for the spark from heaven to fall. fields foot travelers go have I not passed thee on the wooden bridge wrapped in thy cloak and battling with the snow thy face towards Hinksy and its winter ridge and thou hast climbed the hill and gained the white tower of the Cumnor rain Turned once to watch while thick the snowflakes fall, lines of festal light in Christchurch Hall. Then sought thy straw in some sequestered grave. I dream, two hundred years are flown, and thou from earth art gone. Long since, and in some quiet churchyard laid, some country nook where, o'er thy unknown grave, tall grasses and white flowering nettles wave, under a dark, red-fruited yew tree's shade. Thou hast not felt the lapse of hours. Thou waitest for the spark from heaven, and we, ah, do not we, wanderer, await it too. Tis no foot of unfamiliar men today from Oxford up your pathway stray. Here came I often, often in old days. Thyrsis and I. We still had Thyrsis then. Runs it not here, the track by Childsworth Farm, up past the wood to where the elm tree crowns the hill, behind whose ridge the sunset flames, the signal elm that looks on Illsley Downs, the vale, the three lone weirs, the youthful Thames, that single elm tree bright against the west. I miss it. Is it gone? We prized it dearly. While it stood, we said, our friend, the scholar Gypsy, was not dead. While the tree lived, he in these fields 
lived on. Needs must I, with heavy heart, into the world and wave of men depart. But Thyrsis of his own will went away. So have I heard the cuckoo's parting cry From the wet field through the vexed garden trees Come with the volleying rain and tossing breeze Quick despair, wherefore wilt thou go? Hearkens not. Light comer he is flown. What matters it? Next year he will return, and we shall have him in the sweet spring days with whitening hedges and uncrumpling fern, and bluebells trembling by the forest ways, and scent of hay new mown. Thyrsis nevermore we swain shall see. Thyrsis, let me give my grief its hour in the old haunt and find our tree-topped hill. I know these slopes, who knows them if not I? But many a dingle on the loved hillside With thorns once studded, old white blossom trees Where thick the cowslips grew and far descried High towered the spikes of purple orchises Hath, since our day, put on the coronals of that forgotten time They all are gone, and thou art gone
thou art gone, and me thou leavest here, so in these deep. Yet will I not despair. Despair I will not, while I yet descry that lonely tree against the western sky. Fields where soft sheep from cages pull the hay. Woods with anemones in flower till May. Know him a wanderer still. Chase fatigue and fear. Why faintest thou? I wandered till I died. Roam on. The light we sought is shining still. Our tree yet crowns the hill. Our scholar travels yet the loved hillside. 